Good morning sisters and brothers and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. It's Friday. It's Friday morning, the 5th of August. Now, let me say yesterday the 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 prayer, the morning prayer took over 3 hours to upload onto YouTube. Uh, unfortunately, sisters and brothers, I have no control over how long it takes to upload once I do it in the morning and try to upload it sometimes it goes quickly yesterday it took over three hours uh, it has to do with the internet speed and all those other things um, so if you are waiting for it and um, it hasn't come by a certain time do be patient uh, because it should be on its way it's just that I cannot control the internet the speed of the internet and how it uploads anyway let's hope that today this morning it won't take three hours it's nice and cool out here this morning uh, uh, so I don't know if that's a sign that it will be a nice cool day but it's cool out here the wind is blowing as you can hear all right let's pray as we start this new day O Lord open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise blessed are you creator of all to you be praise and glory forever as your dawn renews the face of the earth bringing light and life to all creation may we rejoice in this day you have made as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind as we rejoice in the gift of this new day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord, who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us, and on the third day will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist. Like the dew, it goes early away. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. And just to say the time is 7.20 in the morning. This is the time I am recording the prayer. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. 
Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. And the collect for today. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Savior's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our psalm this morning is Psalm 19. Psalm 1-9. Psalm 19, I'll say the refrain first. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. <clears throat> the heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day pours out its song to another and one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language and their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all lands, and their words to the ends of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun that comes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of from the end of the heavens and runs to the very end again and there is nothing hidden from its heat the law of the Lord is perfect reviving the soul the testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple the statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart the commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey dripping from the honeycomb by them also is your servant taught and in keeping them there is great reward who can tell how often they offend oh cleanse me from my secret faults keep your servant from presumptuous sins lest they get dominion over me so shall i be undefiled and innocent of great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. And the prayer, Christ, the Son of Righteousness, Rise in our hearts this day. Enfold us in the brightness of your love and bear us at the last to heaven's horizon for your love's sake. Amen. The meditation on Psalm 19. God does not want to, sit, to stay hidden from us. He wants us to know him. We know him through his creation, verses 1 to 6, and also through his law, the Torah, God's revelation to Moses, now found in, in the five books of the Bible or the whole scripture. 
David exults in the preciousness of God's word. Is this how you feel about the revelation God has given of himself in his word? How do you approach the scripture? Do you see it as fuel to revive your soul? Verse 7. Rejoicing the heart? Verse 8. Do you desire the word of God more than a 10 million pound inheritance and all that it could purchase? Verse 10. And yet the word of God not only reveals who God is, it also reveals who we are in all our sin and our need. The lofty call of scripture is worthy of all pursuit, yet frustratingly beyond our reach in light of our weakness and our inadequacy. David knows this. Thus, his concluding remarks in the psalm, beginning with, Who can discern his errors? Verse 12. He closes by praying for his words and his thoughts to be acceptable in the sight of God. And he knows that by grace they will be, for in the final words of the psalm he calls God my Redeemer. In verse 14. But how, in the light of his sin, only, ultimately, through the redeeming work of God's only Son, Jesus Christ, who, though perfectly acceptable, was punished as one unacceptable, so that we, unacceptable through sin, might be accepted eternally into God's presence. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And um, sisters and brothers, one of the the beauty of this psalm, one of the beauty of the psalm, of course, is a is a meditation of this psalm on not only God's world, the heavens proclaim His greatness, but on His word, the perfect law of God that revives our soul. If it's one thing we seek to do every morning is to, is to use God's word to revive our souls. The word of God is perfect. It enlivens the soul. It gives life to dead souls, to souls that are moribund. The word of God gives life to our souls. Sisters and brothers, may God's word bring us the, the, rev, the revival that we need, the, the enlightening that we need in our eyes, the purity that we need in our hearts, the, the, the rejoicing that we need in our hearts, the reviving that we need in our souls. Amen. All right, our New Testament reading. This morning is um, Luke. Uh, we're in Luke chapter Luke chapter twenty two, from verse sixty three to the end. Luke twenty two, sixty three to the end. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, Prophesy, who hit you? And they said many other insulting things to him. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, they met together and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Messiah, they say, tell us. Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I asked you, you would not answer. 
But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You say that I am. Then they said, Why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from our own, from his own lips. All right, we stop there. So Jesus is, is on trial, which is kind of a mock trial, but he's on trial nonetheless, before the Sanhedrin, the Jewish council. And um, they are questioning him about his authority, his messiahship. But Jesus doesn't respond to their questioning in the way they would like. Because sometimes, sisters and brothers, um, some people do not deserve to get the, the, get the truth. Because they are not interested in the truth. They are seeking the truth in order to use it against him. And so Jesus is only going to give them information that they need not information that they are asking for. And so he said, the information he gives them is this, from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. Jesus is saying, I am going to be exalted to the right hand of God. That's the information that you need about my identity that you don't need because it will be of no benefit to you um, to give you that information. We know, of course, that Jesus is not just the Messiah. He is the Son of God. And they know it too. That's the thing. They know it too. But they are in their interrogation. They want Jesus, they want Jesus to incriminate himself by speaking those words in this context. Jesus has spoken those words in many other contexts. But they, but they don't want that context. They want this one. And so of course, Jesus doesn't oblige them. Jesus tells them the only thing that they need to hear is that this, this event, this, the action of these people will, sh will prove to exalt him to the right hand of his father. And that is all they need to know. And, and for our purposes this morning, sisters and brothers, is to remind us that all of the insults, all of the, uh, the, 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 the mocking, the jeering, the hitting that Jesus endured, he endured on our behalf, he endured for us. Jesus did nothing wrong to deserve any of this, but he took, he took it on for us. Like a lamb, he was led, like a lamb being led to the slaughter. We are told in Isaiah 53, he, he opened not his mouth. As it were, he did not give, it doesn't mean he didn't speak. He meant he did not defend himself. He did not stand up for justice and righteousness. Rather, he was simply, he simply allowed himself to be led like a lamb to be slaughtered. Why did he do this? He did this because he was doing it for us, for me, for you. So he took the insult, the pain, the disgrace, the shame, the death that you and I deserved. And so whenever we read this information, we should never just read it as another good man, who another innocent man being killed by the system. Because that is what it, that's what it was, but that's not all it was. Innocent people are killed by the system every day. We see that all the time in demonstrations, Black Lives Matter and those sorts of things. Innocent people are being killed. But this man was the most innocent of men. There's never been a more innocent man, and yet he was killed by the system, an, an unjust system. Why? He allowed himself to be put in that place 
because he was taking what we deserved. He who knew no sin became sin for us so that in him we may become the righteousness of God. That is the, that is the great exchange of the gospel, sisters and brothers. The great exchange of the gospel is that Jesus took our insult. He took our pain, our sin, all that we deserved, he took upon himself and gave us instead his righteousness, his obedience, his love, his mercy, his grace, his acceptance, the Father's acceptance into his presence. And so this story of Jesus, the innocent suffering for the guilty, we must always remember that we are that guilty that, in, that this innocent one is suffering for. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the suffering, the insult, the, the, the ridicule, the shame that he endured for me on my behalf, on our behalf, he took what we deserved. He took our pain so that we, we can stand secure, can, we can stand righteous in his sight. Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. We pray for the church, God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church. Send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and the power to our witness. Help your church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray, we continue to pray for those who are sick. We continue to pray for our friend, our brother, our brother David Martins, and pray that God will restore his health, that God will um, grant him grace during this very difficult time of suffering. We pray for our brother Mark. David. We pray for others who are who are weak and frail and ill in our own community. We think of Hannah Todd. Uh, we pray for her this morning. Um, we pray for others. We pray for Jean Murphy and Jean and Walter and Monica and Auntie Janie. We pray for Joanna. We thank you, O oh God, for these, your children. We pray. We thank you for their faith. We thank you for their life. We pray that you will continue to sustain them even in old age. Continue to uh, grow their faith every day so that they will be stronger, stronger and stronger, even as their bodies get weaker and weaker. Their faith, their love, their delight in you will grow more and more every day. Pray for my mom, we pray for Hillary's mom, Eileen. Pray for them as well in their old age, in their weakness. Strengthen them, we pray, by your eternal, all sufficient grace. And all those who are old and weak in our own community, we thank you for the older members of our community. We give you thanks for their, for their faith. We thank you. That like Caleb in his old age, they, they will conquer mountains and hills for you. They will still do exploits in their prayer, in their spiritual lives, even if physically they are not able to spiritually, their prayer and their, 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 their perseverance in the faith will keep us strong as well. Thank you for them. Pray for those who are sick and others who are going through pain today. We pray for those who are traveling, <clears throat> all those who are on the road today. We pray for them, Lord, that you'll be with them 
and give them journeying mercies, we pray. We pray for our young people's um, program this evening. We, we pray, Lord, for more young people to develop friendship and relationships um, through, through this venture, we pray. And we ask that you will be in this, Lord. We pray that your grace will sustain them and us. And we ask for, for your anointing to be upon us this evening. In our prayers, in our worship, in our fellowship, in all that we share this evening as we gather. We pray for your blessing upon this youth venture. And we pray, Lord, that it will grow stronger and stronger. And more young people will come to know each other and, and, and find relationships <clears throat> in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our world. We pray for the bishops meeting in Canterbury for the, for the Lambeth Conference. We ask, Lord, that you will guide them uh, and give them wisdom in the decisions they make for your, for your church, for the, for, the, for, the, for the bettering of your church, for the proclamation of your gospel that they will <clears throat> that your holy spirit will empower them <clears throat> and inspire them to lead and be the under shepherds that you have called them to be to be faithful to your word and to be led by your spirit so bless the bishops we pray we pray for the world and we pray we continue to pray for an end to war and for peace in our world, for an end to conflict. Lord, we pray that you will hear our prayer for all those who suffer as a result of war, persecution, and, 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 and hate and violence in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me. Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you and protect you. May the Lord guide you today, sisters and brothers, and give you wisdom in all the decisions that you make today. May the Lord be with you wherever you're going and whatever you're doing. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.